Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and we are back with the second installment to the Painting 3D Prints Basics. Uh, the last video we covered how to prime our 3D prints, and you can see here this is the result of that last video is our primed hulk. And we are ready to get started on the second video. So this installment is only talking about color blocking and watering down paints. So the paints I use are honestly just cheap hobby paints. Um, these are the colors that I'm going to be using on my Hulk bust. So typically when I start a project, I like to grab all of the colors I'm going to be using so I have them. And you can see that there are a few different brands. I typically stick to just three different brands and uh, that is Folk Art, Americana, and Apple Barrel. So Apple Barrel you can get at Walmart or uh, in a hobby store, and the same thing with Folk Art and Americana. Um, I've seen these at some Walmarts, but uh, I actually got all of my Folk Art at Michael's, and Americana I've gotten at Hobby Lobby. Um, these are just cheap bottles of paint. So these are all like 99 cent bottles. Um, they are very cheap, inexpensive uh, acrylic paints. The only difference here is I do have this color shift paint and I was thinking about using it for the pupils of the eyes so it kind of glows a little bit. And this was I think like two dollars for a bottle of it but uh, it has some really cool effects and I don't use it very often uh, because it's it is kind of crazy and it's just trying to find those right situations to use it but uh, I am going to explain basically how I color block and for those of you that might not know what color blocking is it's essentially where you're laying down all of your solid colors. There's no shading whatsoever involved. It's you're just getting down the foundation that you're going to be building upon. And for this model, since Hulk is pretty easy, my foundation will be this classic green on his skin tone. So I'll get all of his skin tone done. Then I will get his teeth and gums. Uh, and after that, I will be getting his eyebrows and then getting his hair. So there's only a few colors for this model, which is great. So the base is a little different because it actually has some different things in here that I'm going to be doing. So I'm actually probably going to make a separate video on just the different things I apply to this. But I'm going to be applying all the principles that I'm going to be teaching while I'm painting this Hulk bust. So I'm going to just set this guy to the side. So the first thing is, what do I do with my paints? Because I have gotten so many questions of like, what paints you use and how do you use them? There are a lot of amazing paints out there. Um, and I actually decided to go the inexpensive route um, because I honestly didn't have the budget to be able to just drop a lot of money on paints so I you know spent fifty dollars the first round and got fifty bottles of paint um, there are some really good brands that I've used like Army Painter is a really good brand Vallejo is a good brand um, and there's honestly just so many different kinds but the better paints you use the easier things are going to be but when it comes to these paints, I have honestly can get great results with them. It's really just how you use them. And the main thing where I'm going to be talking about now is watering down your paints. So why do you water down your paints? Typically, if you look, there are... These kinds of paints are very thick sometimes. And they're when you're bringing them down and brushing them on a model you can see every single brush stroke so if i'm taking a brush and i'm going through here like that you see that streaking line of a brush stroke and 
there are ways to like not have brush strokes like you could use an airbrush and an airbrush obviously it's you know spraying it on there but there's times where you're going to have to paint things and this is how you get rid of that with brushes so watering down your paints is a very good thing to do i water down almost all of my paints Another reason why you water down your paints is because when your paint is so thick and you're dealing with, here, let me, when you're dealing with a very thin tipped brush, uh, it'll glob on the tip of your brush and you won't get a very good clean amount of paint on there to be able to draw on your model, essentially. So when your paints are watered down, better it's a thinner paint and it collects on the brush a lot easier and you can get those fine details and for this the best example i would say is the teeth and gums and even the eyeballs that is going to be really hard so using a thick paint will be incredibly difficult so that is some of the other reasons why you want to water down your paints so what do you use to water down your paints uh simply put water and it can be any kind of water, uh, just, cl I would say, clean water. Um, for this kind of stuff, you're not actually storing it for a really long time, so you don't have to worry about uh, some of the things that you might be dealing with if you're saving paint for your airbrush and things like that. Um, for these hobby paints, water works perfectly fine. So I actually have tap water right here. Um, I've used bottled water, distilled water, it just make sure it's clean water. So how much paint should you use to water down your paints? This is something that you learn in time, um, but in the very beginning I strongly recommend people to put a little bit at a time. And that is why I actually have this little eyedropper, and I usually just do a drop at a time. This is a very powerful tool. Um, I know I used to just use a brush and I would fill my brush up with water and then just kind of squeeze it to try to get drops down. But sometimes it was inconsistent. Um, I would even just fill my brush full of water and then just start mixing in with the paint. But the problem doing that is this one actually, it doesn't look it, but this will actually hold a lot more water. So you gotta be careful and you can't get that consistency. So you wanna have good control when you're adding water to your paints. And how thin you get your paints, it's really dependent on what you're painting. So if I'm painting a surface that is a big broad surface and I don't wanna do tons of coats of paint, um, I will have it just a little bit thicker. But if I'm going in a very small detail, like say the teeth, then I will actually water it down a little more. So like for the white, the titanium white I'm going to be using for the teeth, I will actually water it down quite a bit so I can actually get in there and let the paint flow into the certain cracks. And the big thing to know is when you're dealing with cheaper paints, there isn't, it, it isn't as high of a concentration as pigment as when you're buying more expensive paints. So the more expensive paints, you're definitely going to have uh, less layers of paint because it has a better coat. But if you're on a budget, cheap paints are the way to go because you can get just good results with these cheaper paints. So you really have to figure out how you're going to use it. So for this, for the skin, I'm probably going to water it down just a little bit, just so I can kind of get into some of the cracks and things like that. But for the most part, I'm not going to get it really watered down. So it's important to know the more water you add, you are actually lessening the amount of the binding agent that is in your paints. And what the binding agent is, is what actually keeps the paints together. So when you're making a brush stroke, the actual paint stays on the path of the brush, but when you are watering them down a lot, it kind of just blobs out. And that means when you're painting a 3D model, that means it's going to just start dripping down. So if I'm painting this eye and it has way too much water in it, 
it's going to be more of a wash and I'm going to put a drop down here and it's going to come down here and it's going to look like he's sad and crying. So you really have to be careful because you can add too much water unless you're wanting to have a wash. And the next video in this series on how to paint this guy, I'm going to be talking about washes. So if you're interested in that, be sure to watch the next video. Okay, so the next thing is just talking about color blocking and stacking your colors. So you want to actually stack your colors in a way to where it's easier on you. There are some people that I know that will paint the entire surface that needs to be painted green. So like for this, if I'm painting it green, I'm going to be going through and just getting the edge of the lips and around the eyes, all around the edges of the hair and trying not to go over any of the areas that are not green. So I am the exact opposite. I am I'm always looking at how I can stack my colors to make it easier on me. So an example here is I will if you look at this Michelangelo that this chunky Mike, Mikey that I painted that you will see that there are a lot of different colors on this but how I did it, what made it very easy on me. So the first thing I did was I did my green base coat. And I did not care if I got it on the stomach or the shell, the nunchucks. Like, I didn't care where I got it. I just wanted to make sure that I covered the green areas that needed to be covered. So the, after I did that, so I had splash over on the stomach and on the shell and the belt. Pretty much everywhere on the uh, straps. But after I was done with the green and I got all of the green where I wanted, like not caring if I got it on the mask, it was just a globby green mess. But the parts that were green were that needed to be green were. So the next thing is, is I looked at what's next on the layering. So the stomach and the shell were kind of next because they were not affected by anything else besides for the stomach, we've got the belt. So I went ahead and did the shell, and after I did the shell, then I did the belt, uh, or I did the, the stomach. And so I painted the stomach, not worrying about the pizza box. I was just trying to get this and worrying about the edges of the green because I didn't want to cross over and have to repaint the green. So once I got that, then I looked at the next layer, and the next layer was the belt. So then I went ahead and I painted the belt brown and I did not care about the belt buckle because I was going to go over that next. So once I painted the belt, then I did the buckle on top. So you can kind of see how I kept stacking up all of the different colors to make it easier and easier on me. So when it comes to this Hulk bust, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint his skin all green and I'm not going to worry if I get stuff on inside the mouth, on the teeth, or even in the eyes, uh, even on the hair. I don't care if I get some on the hair. So I'm just going to make sure that I get all of these edges and get covered over it. And I'm going to give a nice even coat all over this. So now I'm going to start that process and show you that. So for this, I'm using classic green. Uh, the main thing to make sure when you're using these paints, and honestly just about any paint, is you want to make sure you shake it up really well. I've already shook it up all of these paints, so I'm ready to just use it. So I'm going to go ahead and just give a nice little squirt of it. And there we go. And so you can kind of see how thick this paint is. Like, I'm turning it sideways and it's not really moving. So that is what I mean by these things are really thick. So when I brush on this model, you're going to see the brush strokes. So let me get a brush to show you what I'm talking about. So this is just a dry brush, and if I grab some paint here, you know, get my paintbrush good. And let's say we'll just do it on the back here since it's nice and smooth. So if I'm painting it like that, 
you're going to see the strokes and you can see how the paint will glob and things like that. So that is because the paints are just way too thick. So like no matter how many times I stroke it, you see here, you're going to see those lines of the brush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my eyedropper and I just have some clean water and I'm gonna go ahead and just add a few drops. So I'm gonna add probably three for this. One, two, three. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just start mixing this up. Now you're going to see how it's gonna be kind of clumpy and lumpy. And if you see these like lumps and see how it's not very pretty, uh, that means you need to just keep stirring. So the water isn't fully mixed in it and you wanna make sure that your water gets fully mixed. Now you will see some air bubbles in this and that is perfectly fine. It doesn't hurt you in any way. Uh, and there we go. So now if you see me you know, bringing this down, it actually is starting to move a little bit. Uh, so this is a pretty good consistency. So I wanna make sure it kind of you know, drips off my brush like that, if you can see that. And this is the, the best consistency for me. You can add more, you, you can do less. Um, it's just you're going to notice on your models that you might start seeing brush strokes. So now if I do this with the same brush on the other side, you can see how you don't see those stripes as much. Um, and it's also just how, and I'm, I'm applying it the exact same way, and you see how it covers a whole lot more uh, because it, it's thinned out, so it's going to actually spread out a lot easier. So you wanna make sure that you are applying this with thinned paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover this entire model and then go from there. Okay, so I have the first layer done of the paint, and you can kind of see that as it's drying, you can see the brush strokes, but when you kind of look at it like this, like they are not as pronounced. So, so that is the beauty of watering down your paints. So I'm going to let this dry, and then it's going to need another coat, and it actually, how dark this is and how light the, the paint pigment is, this might actually require three coats, but we will see. So I'm just gonna let this dry and I'll come back to it. Okay, so you can see we got the second coat now and it's actually really starting to fill in with that green. It's starting to look really nice. So it looks like I'm gonna let this thing dry and probably do one more layer. Oh, see a little spot I missed. Uh, but I'll do one more layer of this paint that's watered down and I'm pretty sure it will be good. So I'm gonna let this dry and see if I need how many more coats I'm gonna need after this. Okay, so I have now finished the base coat, and if you look real closely, you don't see any brush strokes. So I watered my stuff down 
enough to where you don't see any of the brush strokes. All you see is, unfortunately, the layer lines of the print. Uh, I'm kind of upset of how bad the layer lines got in the face when on the chest, I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous and the back is beautiful too. Like, you barely see any layer lines. And then the face is just looks terrible. But we're still going to print it, and I think, or paint it, and it's still going to look pretty good, I think, in the end. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, wrought iron gray and I'm going to go ahead and water this down and paint all of the hair and edge lines with that. So here we go. Okay, so hair is all done. Uh, it only took one coat all the way around, and it's looking really nice, and the edges look really good. The eyebrows turned out really nice. Now I have to work on the mouth and the eyes, and that's the last bit of the color blocking I have to do. So when I'm actually looking at this and like how I'm actually going to block out the colors, I'm probably going to do the gums first, just because how the teeth actually align with the brush strokes, it'll probably be easier for me to just go over top of that white, that pink with the white. So I'm going to go through and get the gums first on this, and then I'll be adding the teeth. All right, so here we go. Okay, so now I have the gums painted. Now I'm moving on to the teeth. All right, so now I'm done with doing all of my color blocking and just filling in all the solid colors. And you can see I've got the teeth there and uh, everything on the eyebrows, everything is painted nice solid colors. So that completes this part of painting the model. The next part is where I'm going to be talking about ink washes and how to pull out a lot of this definition. So be sure to check the next video in this series on ink washes. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit subscribe uh, to support the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And I uh, hope to see you in the next video when we're talking about ink washes.